We're planting autumn and winter containers today on pots and trowels, and that's brought to you with the support of Cobra Garden and Darlac. Hello and welcome to Pots and Trials. Well, it's the last day of the Harrogate Autumn Flower Show and I've been here for the last three days doing talks on planting containers for autumn and winter interest. So I thought what we'd do today is just make up a quick container for you just to give you some ideas to get that colour and interest in your garden over the cooler months. So I've got together a few plants here. I've got myself a nice pot, so I'm going to quickly put it together. Now, obviously, we're in England. Uh, we get frost in the winter, so if you are planting in a pot you've got to make sure that whatever you put in it is going to be hardy and more importantly the pot that you're using needs to be frost proof. Uh, I love terracotta pots I just think they've got a really warm feel to them very very traditional so if you are using one make sure it's a frost proof pot and this is a really sturdy strong pot that I'm going to be using just here. The other thing is really, really important that we have drainage in it. And as you can see, this one has got a drainage hole there, which will allow any surplus water to drain out so that the plants don't get waterlogged and rot over the winter months. What I also like to do, again, very traditional, is that hole could easily become clogged up with compost. So I always save broken pots, what we call crop like this so I'm going to put a few of those just over the bottom there and if you do them in a way that you put a small piece in and then put a piece over it it creates a gap underneath so the water can still get round but it won't actually block the hole up so that will help to improve the drainage the other thing is this is quite a deep pot and I'm planting this up as a a temporary container it's not going to be permanent it will be planted now here we are towards the uh, end of September I'm hoping it will be fine and stand until maybe next spring when I'll take the plants out and then they can either be put into bigger pots or put in the garden and then we'll plant this with some summer plants so I don't want to fill it all the way with compost so a good tip if you've got a very deep pot is if you've got some bits of old polystyrene from packaging then put a few of those in the bottom that does several things it reduces the volume of compost that we need it also will help a little bit with drainage in the base of the pot and it gives a little bit of insulation as well if we get some really cold weather so you can see I've got those in there and then we can put some compost in now this is a peat-free compost um, and this is one that's actually everything in this is sourced in the UK. It's made in Norfolk, it's the plant grow compost and the compost is made from decomposed plant material, maize and rye that's been used in an anaerobic digester. It's been blended, it's got nutrients in there and it's a really, really lovely friable compost and I'm trialing this at the moment at home growing other plants in it but I just think the structure and the fibrous effect of that will make a really good growing compost in containers hanging baskets and the growing plants in pots so putting some compost in there I'm not adding any extra nutrition in at this point because the plants aren't going to grow much at this time of the year uh, plants are sort of slowing down ready for winter and this will have about three months nutrition in it anyway. So what I can do is if the plants start to grow in the spring, I can just give them a supplementary liquid feed, but there's no point wasting fertilizer at the moment. Never fill your pot too much because we're going to put plants in there and that will bulk it out. We can always add a little bit more. So roughly, you know, two or three inches down from the top of the pot. And then we can start the exciting bit, which is planting. So I've gathered together a few plants that I'm going to put in this container. All of them are hardy. All have got different attributes and will look really good through the autumn and winter months. And I'm going to plant this container as if it's um, at the back, uh, with the back here against the wall. Um, so I want the taller plants at the back and then we're going to cascade them down. Now what I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is actually put it on a turntable so that Jill hasn't got to keep running around. So if we put that on a turntable, I can spin it round. So first thing I'm going to put in is this. This is a Hakuna Kloa. This is a lovely sort of Japanese grass. It's deciduous, which means it dies down in the winter. And I'm just going to knock that out of the pot and put that into there. Good root system on it. 
you could if you wanted to if you're going to take these plants out um, in you know two or three months it's a very temporary container you could leave them in the pot plunge the pots in and then when you take them out there's no root disturbance but I'm going to take these out and put them in the compost just so they make a bit of growth position that and then just put a bit of compost around it and then I'm going to put in a hookra now hookra is a great um, lovely sort of naturally a woodlandy type plant from North America lots of breeding done this one has got this lovely lovely um, dark foliage on it this is a fairly new introduction it's one called Alfie bred by Plantagogo hookra specialists um, and I'm just going to knock that one carefully out of the pot. As you can see, a lovely, lovely root ball. I'm just going to have to spin it round. And I'm going to pop that one next to my Hakana Clower. So that's in there. Lovely dark foliage on that one. They are semi evergreen. If we get a very cold winter, they'll lose some of the foliage, but that will look good right the way through till late winter with those lovely coloured leaves. And then I'm putting in this one. This is the autumn fern here, one of the dryopteris. Again, these will eventually lose their leaves, but they get these lovely autumn tints on them at this time of the year. And then the leaves will go browner into the winter before we cut them down into the spring. So it gives that real autumn feel. So again, we'll knock that out of the pot and that one can go next to that. So that will fill out nicely. Now, I know you're looking at the back, so do you want me to spin it round, Jill? Do you want to have mm -hmm. a look at the... So if I just spin that round, you can see what we're doing. So it's getting there already. Bearing in mind that this is the back that you won't see, so that's the way you'll be looking at it. Um, and then we need something else in there. But this. for a smaller pot, you could just use those three. A small pot would be ideal, or you could actually just use these three and bring these to the front, plant some bulbs in there that would grow up. But I want this to look quite full and lush. Um, I'm not putting any bulbs in, but if you were, you'd put those in first. This is the Otheopogon, often known as the black grass. It's not technically grass, but it's got these grass strap-like leaves. So again, we can put this one in there, very dark leaf in there. And again, it just gives a different texture um, and just adds that little bit to it. And then need a little bit more compost in there. I've got this Heather, now this is a Coluna, Coluna vulgaris, um, the, the sort of native heather that grows on the moors, a cultivated variety, admittedly, and it's just got the flower buds on there now. It looks really lovely. So even though the flowers aren't fully out, I just think that that is going to look absolutely amazing. And it will then take on those autumn hues as the flowers do fade. So that one is going to go in also the front of the pot so take that one out got a really lovely fibrous root system i'm going to pop that one in just there almost let it just cascade over the front like that and then finally so we've got one two three four five the sixth plant is another one of these hookahs and this is a, a trailing hookah and I'm just going to check the name it's called Redstone Falls and these are great in hanging baskets or containers and they've got longer growth so it's going to cascade over the front so I'm just going to carefully take that out of the pot and then pop that one in at the front there and that is it it really is as simple as that so I'm just going to tidy around. If you've got any gaps, just fill in a little bit more compost like that. The idea is we want the compost to be just below the level of the pot. We never want it to be mounded because when we water it, it will just wash off. So we want that rim of the pot to hold in the compost. Just make sure it's all spruced up and there you have it. So a really simple six plants where you could have put these in a slightly bigger pot and just space them a little bit and it would look equally as well. So what I would do with that now is give that a drink. Obviously it's autumn, but we still need to make sure plants are watered. And if I just lift that off, I would water that to settle the compost and to settle the plants in there. And then when you're putting it outside, the final thing I would do is because this is a flat bottomed pot, and if you're putting it onto smooth paving, uh, this is obviously my wooden bench, but if you put it onto a patio or smooth uh, paving, it can sometimes actually almost seal itself and, and 
detract from the drainage there and get become water lagged over winter. So what I'm going to do is pop it onto one of these. This is a pot mate. It's recycled plastic, uh, really clever invention that just sits on your patio. And then our pot can sit onto there like that and it just lifts it off the ground. We've got drainage, we've got airflow underneath it, stops those marks on your paving in your patio, and it means that the plant won't get waterlogged over the winter. Keep your eye on it, keep it moist. Um, it shouldn't need a lot of water because the autumn rains should keep it moist. But if you feel that the compost is drying out, then just give it a drop of water because what tends to happen, this canopy of foliage can stop the water getting down to the compost. Stand that against your door, what a wonderful thing to come home to when you've been out. So there you go, very simple container. Just very quickly, a couple that I made a while ago. This one, again, a very simple one. I've used Sempervivums, the house leaks in this old rustic tray that I've lined with some ground cover fabric to hold the compost in. I've used the same compost, but I've added some grit to it. So it's very well drained planted in my Sempervivums and then top dressed it with this coarser granite chippings for drainage. They will fill out completely and fill that by next year. And that was really easy to look after. It doesn't need much in the way of water. And then finally, this one here, um, I've done more of a contemporary design on this one. Uh, I've got a pit of sporum in the center, lovely evergreen variegated leaves. I've got more of the black grass here as a contrast to also pick up the black stems on this lovely pit of sporum. And then this sort of frondy plant in here, which is called a calocephalus. This is an Australian plant. It almost looks like coral growing, doesn't it? This silvery frondy plant, not 100% hardy to be fair, but it's used more as a, a seasonal plant and it looks great at this time of the year. And I think the black and the silvers make it look very contemporary. Again, on a patio, that should look stunning. And even if these are frosted and damaged, they will still look good right the way through until the spring. <laughs> Well, thank you for watching Pots and Trials. Remember, you can find all the videos that we've done on YouTube where you can also subscribe for free. Next week, we're going to be catching up with one of the growers for another masterclass on their specialist subject. So we'll see you then. Bye.